Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video detailing some information about senior design for the 2021 in 2022 school year. My name is Dr. Hart. I will be coordinating the senior design programs for this year, next year, and I guess potential years in the future to come. This is sort of the second video that I've made for the 2021-22 school year. If you hadn't had a chance to check out the first video that I made, which is about what to expect during senior design, I would encourage you to go ahead and, and check out that video. I'll put a link in the description below for this particular video if you'd like to go check that out. So please do that. What we're going to do with this video is we're going to overview all of the projects that you might potentially work on for the 2021 and 2022 school year in some very brief detail. Um, so I've created a set of PowerPoint slides. So let's go ahead and jump into that and we'll um, start describing those projects. OK, so here we are, project descriptions for ME Capstone. And I said this in the email that I sent out, but if you haven't seen the original email or the email that went out to people, please, if you plan to take senior design during the 2021-2022 school year, please fill out your project preferences. This is going to be done through Microsoft Forms, and there is a link. I'll put a link in the description below to this uh, Microsoft Forms. Please fill out that um, document. Even if you're like unsure, maybe I'll take it, maybe I won't, please fill out the form and we'll try to do our best. The reason I have you fill out that form is it provides your project preferences and what you might want to work on and who you might want to work with for your senior design project. So please fill this out by next Monday. So a week from today, I'm recording this video on Monday, March 29th. Please fill it out by Monday, April 5th. So sit down for about an hour with your favorite beverage of choice. I've got my Coke over here. Um, look at the projects, really think about them, think about who you wanna work with, what you might wanna work on, have conversations with your colleagues, so on and so forth, and, and fill out that form, okay? If you don't fill this out, I'm not gonna have you on the email list. I'm not gonna, you know, you might not and probably won't get to work on the project that you wanna work on. And you probably won't get to work with the people that you wanna work with, okay? so. Please go to that form. It begins with these two questions, which are, you know, very simple questions, but get you there. OK. Uh, so let's get into the projects. First, in industry affiliated projects. So these are projects that have some industry affiliation. And so you will be co-advised not just by someone at OSOE, obviously a professor at OSOE, but probably somebody in industry as well that originally wrote the proposal that you're going to be sort of like working on. OK, so think like Milwaukee Tool. All right, Milwaukee Tool submitted a proposal and there's a co-advisor that you have for Milwaukee Tool. Okay, so let's get into them. The first is a trade show demonstration unit. Um, this is sort of a continuation of last year with a company called IVEC. And IVEC is into kind of like HVAC and HVAC design. And for this particular project, you're gonna be making a miniature sort of scaled down version of sort of an HVAC system that they already have. And the reason that they wanna use this is because they take some of their mini demonstration units with them on trade shows and they sort of want to have like a working prototype that demonstrates how their system works but in sort of like a scaled down model okay so this might be interesting to you if you have a lot of interest in let's say fluids like some small scale prototyping and um, sort of scaling down of original models and if you also have some hvac interest they also have a second project which is kind of a, a new project and it's sort of redesigning a demonstration unit that they already have. They have this cart that kind of demonstrates some of their technologies that they like to take with them on trade shows, but it's a little bit bulky and it's outdated and you know it needs no electrical connections and it just really needs a, a redesign. So IVEC would like to have some students take a look at this cart that they have and, and sort of redesign it, okay? So again, this might be interesting to you if you're interested in let's say fluid dynamics or you know, large scale assembly and sort of coordinating a lot of um, these sort of sub mechatronic units sort of together in a, in a mobile cart for demonstration purposes. Okay, continuing on. Milwaukee Tools like got a lot of cool projects over the years. And this year they're proposing an investigation of a seal which they're using in their nail guns, okay? So there's a seal that's on the inside of this nail gun which you see here being held by a man with cooler tattoos than I have. Um, and one of the issues that they have a seal inside of there that sort of has a certain fatigue life that is not really acceptable to them right now. And so they want to redesign one of the seals that's on the inside of that particular nail gun 
with a new material or a new size or maybe just a new redesign of that particular seal entirely. So if you have interest in thermodynamics and material selection and fatigue methods, um, this might be something that you could be interested in. This next one is awesome. This company hasn't really proposed anything for senior designs in the past, but this year they are. And the person that owns this company is actually an MSOE alumni. It's Alden Railroad Company. And what they want to do is they have two projects. The first one is they want to create a railroad derailleur that's a bit of a one-size-fits-all derailleur. And what's cool about this is they're willing to provide money for prototypes and bring you to their full-scale locomotive testing facility if you're able to make a prototype. They are willing to actually derail a train with a prototype for you. That project sounds so cool. So if you're into like mechanics and materials, material selections, failures, if you're into like trains and you want to derail a 200,000 pound train, dude, this sounds like the coolest project ever. Okay. They have another project, which not as cool, but still very cool, which is the redesign of a braking system for one of their sort of mobile maintenance uh, railway carts. Okay, so maintenance workers need to sort of get around tracks quickly and they want to have these like mobile carts. And the way that the braking system on the, the mobile cart works now is just suboptimal, let's say. So they want to redesign the braking system to be more of a friction braking system, which uses friction or leverages friction against the rails to sort of slow the, the cart down as it's moving from place to place. So this is an interesting project if you're into friction mechanics, heat transfer, thermodynamics, and Again, like railways, if that's something that interests you, you might you might look at this. Okay, there's another company here locally called Tormach. They're making or into making like machining tools. And specifically, they have this one particular mill, uh, this PCN 440. And they need to redesign the housing. I mean, if you look at the housing right there right now, it's it's a little clanky. I mean, they got like a cabinet that's on the bottom there that's you know, connected to the actual milling apparatus there. I, you know, it's it's in need of a redesign. It's not really like super optimized. You know, the top piece is sort of hanging over the cabinet a little bit. It's just, it's not ideal, okay? So they're willing to fund a prototype if you want to make a prototype of a, of a new design for this cabinet. And if you know anything about milling or milling machines, you know, they have to sort of handle a lot of torque, a lot of forces. And so you have to be able to sort of deal with that. And generally, milling machines and equipment is is heavy. And so the weight associated with these guys is going to be something you ought to consider as well. So if you're interested in, in like general manufacturing, because this is kind of a manufacturing idea, I mean, that's kind of like the essence of engineering, right? Like, I'm going to manufacture this thing, you know? Failure analysis will be important here and also material selections, right? So trying to make this cabinet and uh, if there's fluids fl flying around there, you want to make sure that whatever material you select is not corrosive with those, those you know, cutting fluids, et cetera. Another kind of interesting project is a project that TAPCO has submitted. What they want to do is they want to make a prototype of an automatically deployable stop sign that might be used at an intersection where the lights have gone out. So this one is kind of a cool idea. It's like, I don't know if you've ever seen an intersection where like stop lights have gone out and they have like these fold open stop signs, right? But the problem with that is like some technician has to go there and open up the stop sign so that like, you know, to stop at that intersection. And then once the lights are back and working, someone has to go out there and close the stop sign. Like, you know what I'm talking about. It's a bit of an annoying process. So they want to actually have a way to automatically deploy sort of a fold open stop sign that would happen to just open and go if that they can detect that the lights are no longer functioning or working. Um, so I guess there's probably two ways that it might deploy. Either they can detect that the lights aren't working and it automatically folds open or there's some remote technology where somebody that's, you know, 10 miles away can press a button at this particular location and the stop sign will deploy. So um, if you're the mechanical engineer on this project, you'll probably be doing things like, you know, the housing for the stop sign and maybe some of the electronics boxes for that, you know, deployable. And then you'll be partnering. This is sort of a cross disciplinary project with two electrical engineers as well. So the electrical engineering department is selecting two students. We're selecting two students to work together to create this like automatically deployable stop sign for TAPCO. So pretty cool stuff. This next one is interesting and it's for people that might have a little bit more artistic side. Um, I think the combination of product design or 
you know, artistic and engineering is often overlooked, but can be pretty exciting. Um, Old World Wisconsin, this is kind of a, I don't want to say a theme park, but uh, like a, a place, a historic area that you can visit and sort of see how things are done and some historic ideas of Wisconsin. And what Old World Wisconsin wants to do is they want to create a mechanically functioning hodag. So a hodag is kind of like a mythical creature and one interpretation of what a hodag might look like is kind of in the lower right hand corner there um, for an outdoor exhibit that they have. And so there's this email that this guy sent to us with the whole project description. And he's got a lot of cool ideas for what's going to happen with things like maybe it's got some fog that it shoots out of its mouth and maybe it's got eyes that light up and look around and a tail that moves back and forth. And I think this is a pretty cool project, actually, like when it comes to engineering, because you get to do things like mechatronics, robotics. This is really robotics intensive um, and some like artistic ideas here like you're gonna have to think about well what is a hodag what does it look like and how are we gonna design some structure that sort of like looks like this i don't know it's kind of a kind of a cool thing a little like imagineer like disney-esque all right uh here rockwell automation this is a continuation of a project that's happening right now rockwell automation is trying to create some system that can automatically open an electronics cabinet and remove some of the components from that electronics cabinet in what would generally be kind of like a corrosive or a, an electrically charged environment, okay? So Dr. Cook's kind of like working on this project right now, and this picture that you see in the lower right-hand corner here, this is actually a, a, a picture of a module, like a cabinet, that contains a bunch of the modules that Rockwell Automation would like to have some robotic arm that is capable of automatically removing. And so this is, you know eight feet tall or so. And each one of these sort of like handles that you see here contains some module on the inside that would you know need to be removed. And so we have this sort of six axis robotic arm here. We're trying to sort of design maybe a handle that'll go onto that robotic arm that can locate you know, the particular cabinet, open the cabinet, retrieve the module, put the module on some table, close the cabinet door and continue with its work. So. If you're into robotics, this is your project. I'm telling you, Rockwell Automation, they got good support here. Um, this is uh, going to be a pretty awesome project. So mechatronics, robotics, definitely robotics. I should have wrote robotics here. Um, material selection will also be important because you're in sort of an electrically conductive environment. You might need to think about conductive versus insulative materials. So those sorts of ideas. All right. So that'll kind of conclude the industry projects. But we also have a lot of faculty submitted projects. Uh, that you could potentially work on as well. The first comes from Dr. Rizzo. So every year, Dr. Rizzo's got kind of this recurring project where he's looking at various biomedical applications. Um, specifically, I think he likes to focus on braces for scoliosis correction and also for spina bifida. And I think he's done like some um, foot positioning corrections and, and things like that. I don't you know, want to speak too far out of line here, but basically, Using additive manufacturing in conjunction with the Rapid Prototyping Center, you're going to come up with some prototype that might be useful for some biomedical reason. Um, he hasn't quite given a ton of detail on what those projects are going to be this upcoming year, but it's going to be something along those lines. So if you like additive manufacturing, biomedical applications, medical devices, failure analysis, you know, this is all going to be in your wheelhouse. The picture that you see here is from a project that was done this particular year. This is a sort of a back brace or a, sort of an inclusive brace that might be used for some um, scoliosis correction. So this is, you know, could potentially be 3D printed, made out of some polymer and, you know, useful in biomedical applications because you can sort of make a custom shape with 3D printing. All right. Next, Dr. Mahinfla has proposed some students to pursue the ASME design competition. So every year ASME has some design competition usually announced in like the summertime. Previous, you know, projects have been, for example, like football playing robots. And there's a link here to uh, some football playing robots and MSOE is highly featured. OK, so two of the last four teams in the competition from, you know, the last couple of years that this has been held have been MSOE teams. Right. So play second and fourth in 2018, first and third in 2020. So it's not clear what the design uh, competition will be for this upcoming year. Usually they announce in the summertime, so unsure what it's going to be, but it'll almost certainly deal with robotics and mechatronics, you know, material selection, uh, probably some dynamics of some kind, um, a little bit to be determined. Usually Dr. Mahifla fields two teams of approximately five people. 
Next, Baja. So Dr. Sebastianovich, he's sort of the leader of the SAE uh, student chapter here at the Milwaukee School of Engineering. So he's got his finger on a lot of the automotive engineering that goes on here. And he has proposed a series of groups that might look at redesigns of various subsystems for the Baja SAE vehicle. So what you see pictured on the lower right there is kind of the Baja vehicle or an iteration of the Baja vehicle that has been used in the past at MSOE. And a Baja vehicle is usually used in some dirt track and they have some competitions associated. And so um, Dr. Sebastianovich would like to have a variety of groups, up to five different groups working on different sort of redesigns of various subsystems of the Baja vehicle. Those subsystem redesigns that he's interested in is like the frame and chassis system, suspension system, drivetrain system, braking system, and steering system. So obviously this is for people with interest in vehicle design and then those various subsystems for whatever, you know, portion of vehicle design that you might be particularly interested in. Next, uh, interesting project coming from Dr. Williams. So Dr. Williams has sort of observed that there's a lot of energy that might be harvested from trees that are being cut down for whatever reason. OK, so when you think about branches of large trees that exist up above the ground, there's a lot of potential energy since these limbs can weigh a lot and there's a lot of distance above the ground, which a lot of these limbs might might be. So if you can somehow harvest the energy associated with getting those limbs down from that tree, that could be a useful thing. And so he's proposing sort of a this is going to be a two term project, but. A two term project looking at modeling something that might be useful for harvesting the energy associated with the limbs that exist at the top of trees as they're being sort of like cut down in the wilderness for whatever reason. OK, so this might be useful for people or, or for people that have interest in energy harvesting. So, you know, potential energy to kinetic energy, energy transfer, those sorts of things, dynamic systems. So there'll be a little bit of that involved and then some uh, CAD modeling as well, because this is mostly going to be a. Uh, Sort of a computational design since I don't think a prototype is going to be able to be made with this particular um, proposal. Okay, AIAA design competitions. So AIAA is the American Institute for Aeronautics and Astronautics. Some of you know that I have my doctorate in aerospace engineering, so I have a little bit of aero in my background. Uh, not nearly as like, let's say, like Dr. Farrow and uh, Dr. Reichel, but I do have some of my background. And I'm proposing that we send some students to the AIAA senior design competitions. And specifically, AIAA has three separate categories that they usually put out for undergraduates every year for design categories, including space mission design, aircraft design, and aircraft engine design. So three kind of different teams that we would create that would all sort of attack these different projects. OK, and if you know we have a ton of interest in space mission design, maybe we have two space mission design teams. OK, so we could have like a number of teams that go after this. All right. But the idea here is that um, AAA has these design competitions. The space mission design would be something like I think this year the charge was design some mission that goes to Mars and extracts 2.5 kilograms of ice from the surface and comes back to Earth. OK, so things that you would have to do there obviously are like anything astronautics related. So flight trajectory, flight planning of aerospace missions, anything space mechanics related. So satellite dynamics, aerodynamics um, of space. So anything related to like reaction control thrusters and flywheels for positioning and extracting things from the lunar surface or the Martian surface. OK, all that goes into like these space mission designs. So there's a lot there that you can really dive in on and sort of make it your own, depending on what your interest is. Next is the aircraft design portion, which is sort of a separate design competition from the space mission design. And this would be what exactly what it sounds like, designing an aircraft. And usually they'll put out a prompt that says design an aircraft for blah, 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 for blah, blah, blah. OK, uh, in years past, the prompt has been like design an aircraft that specifically uses um, ground effect. OK, so ground effect is a very specific aerospace topic where you fly very close to the ground and you get some benefit from that because the trailing vortices are, are not giving you parasitic drag as much. Okay, whatever. Lastly, uh, aircraft engine design, you would be advised by Dr. V. And here, this is just designing aircraft engine, which obviously is very complicated. And again, AAA will put out a prompt in the August timeframe and detail everything that needs to go on for your specific design. 
Okay, so if you're interested in thermodynamics, combustion, jet propulsion, this one is for you. You can check out some of the previous prompts and information here at this particular website if you want to go ahead and, and check that out. All right, next. Uh, Professor Swedish has got some partnerships with folks at NASA. And the first project he has, he has kind of two projects, is to create an autonomous plant watering system. And I think they've already kind of got a, a nice prototype here that just might need some redesign. So specifically, he's asking for a group, a small group, to sort of redesign this autonomous plant watering system. Um, so it's a system meant for creating plants in space. And so you're trying to minimize the power that you use and um, create the timing so that it automatically waters the plants at a very you know particular time. So really interesting stuff. Again, if you're interested in like space and space mission stuff, um, this is for you. Um, in his proposal, he's specifically calling for if anyone has a particular interest in plants, like if you know about botany and know timings for when to water plants and stuff like that, this also might be interesting um, to you. Okay. He's also got a proposal for kind of an unknown project right now. Um, he's in coordination or conjunction with another engineer at NASA who is looking at submitting a project for MSOE. They don't quite know exactly what that project is. So if you want to kind of roll the dice and take a look at and say, you know, I'm interested in space, I'm interested in NASA projects, maybe I'll just throw my hat into that particular ring and, and see what I get for a, a project. I promise you, since it's going to be some NASA project, it will be cool and interesting. All right. Next is uh, Dr. Rodriguez. So Dr. Rodriguez has been working on this for many years now. The uh, fluid power vehicle challenge. So over the years, the idea of this particular project is you're going to build a vehicle that somehow uses fluid power for propulsion. All right. So hydraulic pneumatic power, and then you'll build that vehicle and, and compete with that vehicle in some design competition. Right. So here's a design from 2019, 2020. I think they had best presentation award for this particular vehicle so it just kind of like looks like a bike that's got a bunch of pneumatics on it which looks actually very awesome um, i kind of want to ride i kind of want to ride that thing um this would be for people with interest in fluid power power transmission instrumentation uh, would also be kind of a, a recurring theme here as well so adapting here a bicycle but it doesn't necessarily have to be a bike could be something else dr kumbadi is looking at how can you introduce a torque sensor? He wants to work on a project where you're integrating a torque sensor into an electronic bicycle. Uh, this bicycle here isn't really related to anything we have in MSOE right now. I just kind of found the stock picture of an electronic bicycle somewhere. But the idea is that there are these e-bikes that exist that basically run on hybrid power. So you can pedal a little bit, you can use the motor a little bit, and part of an electric bike and how it works is there needs to be some information about how much torque the rider is providing so that the engine knows how much energy it should be providing as well. So there's ways to incorporate these sensors, but the ways that they're done right now is not the best. And so there needs to be kind of like a redesign of a torque sensor. And um, I think Dr. kampati has got like a nice idea here for potentially redesigning how a torque sensor might be put onto a an electronic bicycle. So if you're interested in kind of like hybrid power, energy harvesting, controls, control schemes, that sort of thing, this might be uh, this might be for you. Lastly, uh, Dr. Kampati has proposed another idea for a wheelchair electronics package. And his idea here is, I want to be able to adapt any non-electric wheelchair that exists into an electric wheelchair using a simple package that is sort of a one size fits all. So an idea of, I want to create a deliverable that is an electronics package that if you hook it up to any wheelchair can be utilized to turn that wheelchair into an electric wheelchair. That's the basic idea there. Um, no pictures here, sorry. Uh, you guys, I think, know what wheelchairs look like. Um, this would, again, be interesting for someone with interest in mechatronics, robotics, here are biomedical devices. So if you have like a biomedical itch you want to scratch or like helping disabled people, maybe you know someone that's disabled that could potentially benefit from this. Um, there you go. All right. Lastly, uh, student proposed projects. We actually only have uh, one, <laughs> and that is proposed by Riley. He wants to look at redesigning the roll cage of a NASCAR vehicle. 
Uh, again, this is not the NASCAR vehicle you will be looking at designing. I just found this sort of stock footage of a NASCAR vehicle. If you don't know what a NASCAR vehicle looks like, uh, where you been? Uh, this is a, an example of a NASCAR vehicle. And Riley wants to redesign the roll cage of this NASCAR vehicle, specifically based on an accident that happened this most recent year that sort of showed some design flaws that potentially existed with these NASCAR vehicles. So if you're into vehicles, motorsports, mechanics, materials, finite elements, Impact, I think, will be important here. So impact mechanics will be important. Uh, maybe this project is for you. Okay. So that's a very brief description of all of the projects that have been proposed. Now I need you to go and look at the full proposals if you really want to get an itch or really want to get an idea of what these are all about. I provided here a link to the box folder that contains all of the project proposals, as well as this particular presentation. So if you use this link, you'll be brought to a box folder that has all of the full proposals that you can check out. And once you're done and you have an idea of some of the projects that you might want to work on, oh my gosh, please go fill out that form so that I know what your project preferences are and I know who you want to work with. If you don't fill that out, I'm not going to be able to help you, etc. All right, that'll do it for me for now. Um, fill out your project proposals. Rawr.